Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Bars Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. It is the Scythe Fuma 2 CPU Cooler. Now this is one that I'm excited to be testing, and I think a lot of you are going to be excited to learn about. Back when I conducted my best under $100 CPU cooler shootout in November 2019, a lot of people followed up and said, well, why didn't you include the Scythe Fuma 2? Well, at that time, I actually had considered including the Fuma 2, and I asked Scythe if they'd wanted to send a sample along, but they kind of missed the boat on that, and I went ahead with the cooler shootout, and the winner was the Nocto NHD 15 Chrome X Black, which is right here. It was an exceptional cooler, and at $100, it maxed out the price range I was looking at. Well, as it turns out, Scythe was interested in being in that shootout, and they, they came back to me and said, we really want to kind of be in that shootout against these high-end coolers. I said, well, look, I already did that shootout. Why don't I conduct a different shootout? You have a 120 millimeter cooler that comes in at $60. Why compete against $100 coolers? I'll just stage a new cooler shootout, 40 to 60 or 40 to $70. So, you know, you're, it's more in your ballpark. They said, no, we don't want to be compared to $50, $60, $70 coolers. I said, but this is a $60 cooler. They said, no, we only want to be compared against dual tower 140 millimeter coolers. That had me scratching my head, but I said, well, I've got the benchmark, so I don't really have to redo those. Um, okay, go ahead and send me the sample, and I'll run a, a benchmark review for you. We'll see how you do, but keep in mind, you're, you're submitting a $60 cooler, and you want it to go up against $100 coolers. They said, that's what we want. So here we are today. We do have the Scythe Fuma 2, and what I have here, and this, this kind of goes back in history. This is the Scythe Fuma Revision B. I actually tested back this back in 2017. And at that time, I thought it was a fantastic cooler in terms of performance. In fact, it won my roundup of 120 millimeter based coolers. It totally decimated the field, including the Noctua NH U12S, which I had considered really the reference cooler at that time. It came in at, this came in at under $50. It beat that $60 cooler, it beat all the other coolers. It was really, really incredible. And I could never recommend it to anyone. And the reason was it was a complete pain to install, and it totally blocked the RAM slots. You had to use ultra low profile RAM if you wanted to use this cooler. So fast forward two years and we're at the Fuma 2. They've completely redesigned it. And I'm going to show you some back to back video of these two, just so you can see how completely different they are. Now I'm not going to benchmark the revision B here because frankly, I hate installing the system, this in my system and I'd have to change my RAM and I'm just not going to do it. So sorry, you're going to have to trust me. It was a good cooler and it was a complete pain to install. I don't recommend it. But the Fuma 2 is, is like I said, a clean slate cooler. Let's see if they can truly compete with those dual tower 140 millimeter coolers and still be easier to install. That is going to be a tough call, but I think they may be able to do it just based on my looking at the cooler and seeing kind of how they've redesigned it. I know that the Fuma Revision B was really, really good. All they had to do was get the installation right. And I have a feeling that they've, they've done that. So let me crack open the box here, show you what you get inside, and then I'm going to install it for you so you get a feel for what it's like. And then I'm going to run the benchmarks and give you my conclusion. So I'll be back in a moment. So taking a look at the original Scythe Fuma on the left and the new Fuma 2 on the right, you can see the Fuma 2 is quite a bit taller and also has a different fan. The base has been offset tremendously to make clearance for RAM and also the fins have been cut out in the rear to clear motherboard components. Looking at the top, you see they've ditched the chrome top for a black top, which is a lot more in vogue. And then looking at the bottoms of the two coolers, again, you can see just how offset the Fuma 2 is on the top here, really making space for your RAM. You still get six big heat pipes. And here I'm just going to show you the comparison to the Noctua NHD15. Both use fans in the middle and fan in the front. And here I'm just showing you how those fan clips work. Moving on to the components, here we again have the Fuma 2, so I've set aside the Fuma. Again, those fan clips are, are a little bit hard to work, just like any fan clips, but luckily you don't actually need to remove this fan to install it in the case. That's just amazing. I'll show you how that works momentarily. So just clip these on out of the box and then never worry about them again. That's, that's a, a new feature of the new Fuma 2. We also have a number of parts here that I've set out in front of you. Uh, this is the back plate. It's actually pretty neat. It's got little rubber components that hold the standoffs in place. It's really, really easy to use. Then we also have th the tube of thermal paste. There's not much in here, but at least it's very easy to apply with this syringe. Just make sure you don't use too much. I'd say there's about two applications in there total. 
Now I'll go over the components you need to attach the cooler to your motherboard. There aren't individually labeled bags. Everything comes in one bag, AMD and Intel, but at least there aren't too many parts in there, so you'll be able to sort through them. I've pulled out the requirements for the socket 1151 I'm using. That's an Intel socket. These are the rubber standoffs. They are insulated on one side or the other. Just note that. And these are the brackets that go on either side of the cooler. We also have the uh, thumb screws. These can be easily screwed on uh, lightly with your thumbs and then you can actually secure them with a screwdriver. Now this backplate is only required for Intel setups and I'm just showing you how you actually adjust the mounting holes where the standoffs go. So I'm going to be setting it in the middle position for socket 1151. There's also socket 775 and then another Intel socket on here. So I'm just going to put it in the middle and then use this rubber securing device to hold it in place. It's really slick. All right, now for what will hopefully be the fun and very quick part, installing the cooler in the system. So I start with that backplate I showed you. I did set the standoffs to the socket 1151 standard. Make sure you have that ahead of time. So you can see it fits perfectly here. It's going to fit through the four holes in the motherboard. I pull it through, making sure it's even on all sides and not askew in any way. So it's firmly against the back of the motherboard. Then I take the spacers. The black spacers do have an insulating portion on one side. That's the side that touches the motherboard, so when you screw it in, you don't scratch the motherboard. So I'm going to put those onto the standoffs, and what's nice about them is they secure uh, just with a friction fit. You don't need a screw. You don't need to twist them. But they also stay in place, which is great, which means your, mo your motherboard backplate won't fall off. Now I'm going to put the brackets on. They fit over the posts, and I'm installing the cooler from uh, with airflow from front to back and so I need to install these horizontally. Make sure they line up with the posts. I actually, uh, if you can see closely here, I haven't lined up the bottom one yet, but I will do that momentarily. I'm just going to affix the thumb screws on the top bracket first and I just do that with my fingers and then I use this included screwdriver to secure it. Notice that it's a very long screwdriver and that's because they include it for use with the cooler itself which I'll show you in a moment. You need that long reach to get through the cooler but here I'm just going to use it to secure those thumb screws. Make sure it's in place uh, and nice and tight. Now this is not where you get the tension on the CPU heat spreader. That comes from the cooler so I don't make, need to make these too tight. I just need to make sure that the brackets aren't slipping around. So I'm going around diagonally, make sure that the back plate is pulling through evenly. Now it's time to apply the thermal paste, which is pretty easy given the included syringe. I apply a small dot and just spread it around a bit in the middle of the heat spreader. It will spread more fully once I bolt on the heatsink. I'm going to go ahead and do that now and notice that I've actually removed the fan from the middle of this, but they're actually pass-throughs for your screwdriver, so you don't need to remove the fan from the middle. And I actually recommend that you install the fan ahead of time because it's easier to do outside of your case than inside your case. So I'm just going to position this cooler in place. Don't forget to remove the protective tape over the bottom of the heatsink before you do that. Then using the screwdriver that's included with the cooler, bolt down the two tension screws alternating from top to bottom evening out the tension and not applying too much tension to one of the screws. The cooler is now in place and now I just need to connect the fans. Here's the PWM splitter that's included with the Scythe Fuma 2. I will connect it to the front fan and then I will connect it to the motherboard with the 4-pin header here. Luckily there's plenty of space around the cooler to reach your motherboard. You can see here that it's no trouble at all. I'm saving this other connector for the second fan, which I'll install right now. Remember, thanks to the ingenious design, you can actually install this fan ahead of time rather than having to deal with these little fan clips while they're in your case. I really like the innovation that Scythe has engineered into the top plate. And thanks to that slim fan in front and the big offset, there's perfect clearance even for my ultra high profile RGB RAM here. Speaking of clearance, there's plenty of clearance underneath this cooler for the first PCIe slot as well, which is important. There's also clearance above the cooler to get your hands into the case and work with the cables that need to connect at the top of your motherboard. I can't emphasize enough how easy it is to install this cooler and how well designed it is to fit in modern systems. So here's another look at the cooler installed and ready to go. Let's hit that power button and see how it works. 
Things are looking great so far. Both fans are spinning, cool and quiet. And despite not having any RGBs, the cooler looks very good in this system. And that means it's time for some benchmarks. Let's start with the idle benchmark on my Intel Core i9-9900K processor. We see that the Scythe Fuma 2 is incredibly well composed, hitting just 27 decibels, which is essentially the noise floor in this system. You can thank its dual Cos Flex fans running at just 550 RPM for that very, very low noise level. Yes, the CPU is running a little warmer, but that doesn't bother me at all at idle. What I really want is that very low noise level. Moving on to the first of my load benchmarks, this is CPU-Z stress test, and it's a good approximation for a gaming engine. It presents a 208 watt load for the total system. Now we see that the Scythe Fuma 2 is at 80 degrees, which is right in the middle here among the five coolers in the table, but you see that it's actually beating one of the liquid coolers and badly beating the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, despite being the quietest cooler of the five here. Now, not all full loads are actually created equal, and when you want to push your system to the max, Cinebench R20 will do it. This pulls a full 250 watts from the wall, and that's just the CPU, not the GPU. Most coolers in this size class would crumble under this load, allowing the CPU to hit 100 degrees and throttle, but not the Scythe Fuma 2. It's entirely composed and controlled, and those dual Cosflex fans are coming in at under 1200 RPM, which is what translates to that ultra low noise level of 36 decibels. This is an incredibly impressive result. And I really like the balance that Scythe has provided with this cooler. Plenty of power for the highest of loads and yet incredible silence. All right, well, I think that covers it. This is an amazing, amazing cooler. In fact, this cooler is so good that it's not even in this box. It's in the PC that I'm recording this video on right now. It is such a good cooler that I'm going to be using it in my own personal video production system. And because it's so small and so easy to fit in a case, I'm actually gonna downsize my system as well. Up until now, I've been running a liquid cooled system and it required a big case. It made a little bit more noise than I liked, particularly at idle. And it was hard to work in because the cooler was there if I wanted to switch cases or switch components. It was a big pain. Now I've got a cooler that's like amazingly compact and performs nearly as well as a liquid cooler and, and really does actually compete with those $100 air coolers that Scythe said it would. I truly am amazed and frankly, I thought Scythe was being a little over overconfident. You know, I said, seriously, I'll just compare it against other $60 coolers. Won't that be okay with you? And they said, no, we don't wanna be compared against other $60 coolers. And you know what? It beat the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. It nearly caught up with the Noctua Chromex Black, which is an amazing cooler. It beat at least one of the liquid coolers that I tested. Frankly, it's just a, a complete win. I, honestly, this is my favorite cooler ever. I like it more than the Noctua because it's so easy to install. It doesn't block the RAM slots. It doesn't cover up my RGB RAM, which I wanna be able to see. It doesn't make it difficult for me to reach the release switch on my GPU slot, the PCI, PCIe slot for my GPU. I mean, I can reach in my case without cutting my hand <laughs> on the fins. It's just, it's just a perfect cooler. It will fit in nearly any system. You can even use this in a mini ITX system. That's amazing to have this much power in there. Frankly, I can't say a bad thing about this cooler. Yes, it's 10 or $12 more than the original Scythe Fuma, but that's because of the massively upgraded Cosflex fans that it comes with. They're just so, so good. Um, I actually run them in some of my systems just as case fans because they're, they're really, really good fans. And when combined with an innovative offset dual tower heatsink, you get a cooler that punches way above its size, class, and price. Congratulations to Scythe. Thanks for getting on my case and saying, you know, yeah, we we want you to co compare it to the best you have. And that's what I did. So it did really, really well. If you have any questions, post them down below. As always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'll catch you soon.